All right, welcome back here at Fish Northwest. We are in the Bait Lab. Bait Lab presentation is brought to you by Sportco and Outdoor Emporium. So tonight we're talking Springer, Spring Chinook fishing, and some of the options when it comes to flashers, inline rotator, 360 flasher, We've got a number of varieties here. Uh, are we dragging bait? Are we dragging Brad's uh, cut plugs? What size? Herring? cut plug or in helmet, uh, what are the benefits of, slider weight or fixed. There is a variety, but this is basically a breakdown of some of the things that I like to do that I've had success with. Uh, not just springer fishing, this is applicable to a number of different fisheries, but when it comes to springers, you kind of got to get your program dialed in. And these are some basic takeaways that I rely on. Next week, I'm going to jump into some more detailed information on the trail end of this entire setup when it comes to bait and scent and all those types of things. So tonight it's all about the rigging. Um, what I prefer to start with is my uh, edge rod, my 360 Pro. These rods are designed, engineered, and built with the uh, working of a 360 rotating flasher in mind because of the way the rod loads and recoils and giving that ideal cadence and thump to your 360 rotating flasher no matter what style or size of flasher you're running, okay? That is, that is this rod in its best form. That is what it likes to do. That being said, it works fantastic for any of your lead dropper fisheries. It works really well when we're spinning inline rotator Big Al Fish Flash from uh, Yakima Bait. It also works fantastic because of the amount of glass in this rod as a downrigger rod. So. If you're trying to equip your boat uh, <clears throat> with rods that are suitable for lead fishing and downriggers, the 360 Pro, this is a SAR 1065. This is a 12 to 30 pound, 10 and a half foot rod. I will run this all day long in my lead fisheries. I'll run it all day long in my downrigger fisheries in the salt water. It gets it done for me. So uh, basically put a, uh, a, oops, a good reel on here with, uh, 65 pound braid and I'm not running any top shot on here because I don't need to we're running braid right down to our terminal end so what does that look like here's a basic setup braid right to a heavy gauged uh, snap swivel um, is where it terminates above that I put on the VIP Sliding lock, these work fantastic. I, I opted to start using these a couple years ago and uh, I won't go back. The VIP slider lock gets it done. It's what I'm clipping my weight to and I prefer to rig a slider for the reason that I want my weight to move up and down my main line if in fact the lead hanging on the end of this 12 inch dropper gets caught up in the net and the fish takes off the fish can still travel and it's not gonna snap my line. So I fish a slider. Typically I'm running it on a 12 inch dropper. Now you'll see the difference between the dropper and the bumper. 12 inch dropper, 24 inch bumper. Okay, that goes to my fish flash. Let me talk about the colors on these, uh, on these droppers. So this one is red. This is made by Coldwater uh, Strong. Ken makes some very nice products. And I like to run a red dropper based on my clear model that's on my bumper in the fact that they do get tangled up. I can tell which one is which. It's just, it just makes it easier and cleaner for me. Um, you can make 24 inch bumpers, 12 inch droppers all day long. They're not that difficult, but uh, can make some really nice products. These 12 inch bumpers come in packs of three. You can also get them uh, a complete kit. Here you go, this is cold water strong. It's your bumper, it's your uh, quick release on your flasher, it's your dropper, it all comes in one. Now, Ken is not a sponsor of this show, I just wanna make that clear, but I believe in his products and I use them when it's applicable. I like the strength of his uh, droppers and I like the fact that they're red so I can see the difference between that and my bumper. So, 24 inch bumper, these are made with a nice uh, uh, bead chain swivel. 24 inches of 150 pound mono, okay, which is plenty strong to get it done. It also is nice that it helps prevent line twists. If you're running lighter line than that, uh, you're apt to get uh, things twisted up from time to time. 24 inch bumper goes into a uh, girthy uh, ball bearing swivel with a dual lock. 
right to my Big Al's Fish Flash. Now this is the 10 inch BMK. This color out on the Columbia, for whatever reason, Bill figured something out years ago, Bill Monroe Jr. And they customized this color for him. It's all he runs 99.9% .9 of the time. 10 inch, especially in water with some turbidity in there, got a little dirtiness to the water. That Columbia, when they're flowing water and you get snow melt going into the spring, things get a little dirty in the Willamette, whatnot. This color shows up, reflects really well in dirty water. I use it religiously, and I like to go with the 10 inch versus the eight inch, simply for the bigger profile, bigger flash. Uh, the drag in comparison is nominal, so you don't really know the difference there, but simply by running a larger flasher, uh, bigger profile, bigger flash, it has that better tractability. Goes into a dual lock right into a swivel onto my leader. Now, when it comes to herring leaders, it's a typical mooching rig. I'm running a four-aught hook and a, and a three-aught hook as the trailer. The bait hooks into the four-aught hook here. We'll talk about rigging on uh, plug cut herring and whatnot next week. I'm running 30, sometimes even 40 pound fluorocarbon. Now, I know a lot of guys will run monofilament. The dirty uh, Columbia, you don't need to run fluorocarbon, whatever. Um, I just tie all my leaders throughout the season. I pretty much stick to the same thing. I like a good girthy leader that I know I can put some pressure to these fish. If I got sea lions in the area, want to crank them in, I'm going to get after it and uh, tighten down that drag and really put the pressure to them. And uh, so, you know, nothing wrong with 40 pound, plus it, uh, the, 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 the bait spins just fine. The rotator spins fine. And uh, it's a little bit springy, so it doesn't tend to spin up as much. I like the way it acts in water, so I stick with it. 52 inches. I've gone back and forth between, you know, four foot, five foot, five and a half. Again, dirtier water, even when it cleans up a little bit, I just stick with 52 inches. That works for me. I know guys will uh, change in distance away from your flasher. I like it being within that 50 inch range to that flasher. Again, especially if the water's a little bit dirty, okay? So let's talk about the, uh, the bumpers and um, some different line gauges. So one thing I discovered, I was running cold water products, um, uh, cold water uh, strong products on a number of fisheries in the Columbia. And you can get these bumpers in 24, you can get them in 18. So if you're running inline rotator or a 360 flasher, you can get them in uh, 24 or 18. So 18 inches is gonna just make that uh, much more erratic uh, and shorter uh, uh, throw on your 360. It's gonna be a tighter circle. You get a 24 inch bumper on there, it's gonna elongate that throw a little bit more. Kind of open up that uh, oblong circle a bit and make a bigger profile. One thing I noticed, uh, and I talked to Ken about this and he agreed. So if you look at the terminal ends on his presentations, a lot of them have glow, high visibility. This is 200 pound mono, so this is the heavy gauge stuff. And fishing in fisheries where there seems to be a lot of activity, a lot of other boats present, a lot of uh, gear in the water, I was realizing that this high profile stuff tend to push fish off. I wasn't getting bit. And so I went back to um, some, of the, some of the standard bumpers that I had made, uh, 150 pound mono, obviously there's no um, big flash or glow or anything on that for attractability. So uh, what I realized is in busy fisheries, lots of activity, lots of flash, lots of things going on, you just dumb it down a little. And so Ken actually did also come out with, and much like I run, you know, 150 pound uh, seems to get it done, a little lower profile black ends uh, crimped onto his terminal ends of his uh, rigging. So you can get him an 18 to 24 inch bumpers and droppers uh, of 12 inch. And it's just all kind of incognito, low profile, again, smaller diameter, less drag. And this stuff works really well. I tend to tie all mine up very similar, barrel swivel at the end, okay. I got a B chain, a Brad's B chain at the uh, terminal end of the uh, bumper. I run 24 inch, uh, 24 inch bumpers 90% of the time, especially when I'm running 360 flashers. 24 in front of the flasher, 12 inches on the dropper, and I'll use the ones I make. I'll use the uh, cold water strong ones in black. Um, when applicable, really dirty water, maybe even out in the salt water, I'll grab some of these higher visibility ones and run those. So don't be afraid of those. If you're looking for things that are pre-made so you don't have to make them, uh, check out Cold Water Strong, and now you have options.
You can get the low profile ones, 150 pound test, mono, you can get the 200 pound, whatever's your preference. I'm just giving you guys some options out there as far as your rigging. Okay, uh, in uh, inline rotators, I'll tell you what, most success I have found over the years, it comes to the BMK, um, if I'm not running that, green and chartreuse, yellow and chartreuse, this is yellow and chartreuse with red, there seems to be a combination, uh, either reds, uh, the moon glow, moon jelly, uh, moon burst, depending which company you work for is what we call this. So high visibility, high UV, lots of flash, and the greens and chartreuses are one of my favorite go-tos, even in stained or dirty water. They just seem to get it done time and time again. I'll talk next week about carrying up some of your baits with chartreuse and some options there. But if I have to change things around and I'm running um, a couple different options on my boat, I'm definitely starting with some reds. I'm definitely starting with some chartreuses and some yellows. Uh, one thing I do like about the Max Lure Triangle Flasher Inline Rotator, the nice thing they did is they've made them so you can open them up. You can slam a whole bunch of tuna in here right out of the can, snap the top back on this, uh, this bad boy and put that into operation and now you have a tremendous amount of scent that filters out of this sink. And if you notice, we got red, we got chartreuse, we got flash, it's got it all, and it has a scent chamber. Their 360 flasher with a fin, they rotate fantastic. I actually rigged this one to be a breakaway because I like to fish all my 360s as a breakaway. So I'll use the Max uh, 11 inch 360 flasher. Again, this one comes apart. You put tuna in it right in this. We use this in the salt water using the Columbia works great. This is a novel alternative. Again, we got flash, we got chartreuse. If we're running a series of 360 flashers and you have four or five, six rods in your boat, it doesn't hurt to put one of these out to see if that extra scent attractiveness, that tuna and oil coming out of this flasher makes a difference. My preferred one, I go with the brads. The 360 brads with the, with the breakaway, it's built right in. You know, a lot of these flashers, if you go with uh, like a Pro Troll, uh, chrome in mirror, which works great. Uh, a lot of confidence in this one here. Um, you either have to rig a breakaway on it if you choose to fish breakaway, or you have to purchase separately the breakaway features to put on these, okay? The nice thing about the Brad's 360 flashers, one, they are a 10 inch flasher versus an 11 inch flasher, no big deal. Um, they're stackable and they have the breakaway mechanism built right into it. So when the fish hits the terminal end, it releases that bungee, which gives you a free floating breakaway flasher. The other unique thing they have about them is at the top end, your pull point can be adjusted. If you are in faster current, you wanna fish the tip of the uh, flasher by putting your bead chain through that top point. Um, so it's the highest pull point and exposes the less amount of fin forward of your pull point into the water. Um, I typically run them on the center setting for the majority of the speed of current or uh, current that I fish in. If you have real slow water, you can put it back here at the farthest setting, which exposes the most lip out in front of your pull point, which causes that thing to dig a little harder, and it really gets a good rotation going on minimal current. So the cool thing about the Brads is the adjustability and the fact that it has a built-in breakaway. Now I like to couple that out the back of the boat with a Brad's cup plug. Now this is a mini cup plug. Uh, it works fantastic for Spring Chinook. I rig it with uh, two one-aught hooks or a two-aught and a one-aught trailer, depending on what I have available. Um, the thing I like about these, obviously, is you can fill them with scent. Tuna is my go-to. I typically mix my Potsky's krill powder in with my tuna, put it in my Brad's cup plug. And as you see, a variety of these, again, as uh, we demonstrated with Scott Call, owner at Brad's, <clears throat> earlier this summer, don't be afraid when you're going after Chinook to run some of these KCPs, the kokanee cup plugs. Yeah, they're small, but them big Chinook will go after these uh, time and time again. Definitely put one-aught hooks on your kokanee cup plugs. Don't weight them down with anything more than double one-aught hooks. Couple beads out the back door and um, keep the hooks fully exposed. And I am running those behind these rotating flashers on 30 inch leaders, okay? I want a lot of whip, I want a lot of uh, action, 
This thing is spinning like crazy. The flasher's whipping around. If I really want a lot of whip and a tighter window, again, I put this on an 18-inch bumper, but typically I'll run them on a 24-inch bumper. And depending on the current and how strong it's pushing or how deep of water, we're fishing 8, 10, 12 ounces of lead, okay? So um, 360 rotator, Brad's cut plug out the back, 30-inch leader, herring off of my inline, uh, rotating flashers, 52-inch leader, herring in a helmet, which I'll get into next week, 52-inch leader. It's just some of the standbys I do. And again, you can choose to get the heavy gauge 200-pound with the high glow. You can get the 150-pound test that is uh, dumbed down and not, uh, not so it pushes fish off. Rig your weights so that they slide and don't get hung up. And uh, get yourself a good solid fishing rod like a uh, 360 Pro Series from Edge. Okay, I think that's going to cover this week. Next week, we'll be back in here talking bait in the bait lab. Bye.